arrived and my husband not clear off his end table. <laughs> no one's here. Oh, hi. People are here. I'm talking to myself. I'm like, oh, my husband didn't clean off his end table like I asked him to do. So, hi, guys. I just got home from work. Um, hi, Sarah. Hi, Doug. Hi, Kyle. Thank you for posting everything um, for me. Hi, Hugh. Hi, Ashley. I told you guys it was going to be a no makeup flannel shirt type of uh, live. And it is what it is. I have my, not a cocktail, but a protein shake because I didn't have time to eat. So, so that, that's to help me with the energy. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Carol. Thank you, Ashley. I don't feel fresh and young, but it is what it is. And I was going to do this on my iPad, but apparently you can't do YouTube lives on your iPad. So my whole setup is kind of wonky. So just bear with me. Hi, Jenny. I'm not as professional as Ashley when it comes to this. Hi, Leanne. I'm great. How are you? Um, yes, what Kyle just said, if you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love you guys to please subscribe. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers and we're not there yet. I don't even think we're, how Kyle can tell, I think it's like 435, I think, but if you guys would subscribe, that would be awesome. Hi, Jenny. Thank you, Sarah. So yes, the Dave Hebler interview. That was so awesome. I want to talk a little bit about some of the shows we've done. And that was one of the episodes that I wanted to talk about with Dave Hebler. So if you guys don't know who Dave Hebler is, he was one of Elvis Presley's bodyguards. And he was fired in 1976 along with uh, Sunny West and Red West. And he was also one of the contributors to Elvis What Happened. So that being said, I did not know, like I didn't know him. So I didn't know how he was going to be. I didn't know what his personality was. So I was a little nervous and probably intimidated. Um, you guys are funny. So I was a little intimidated, but I had no reason to be because he, if you go back, if you go to junglerunpodcast.com and you can find that interview. It's also on YouTube as well. I put it on YouTube. And I think you guys if will be enlightened is a, is a good word, surprised. Because everything you, you thought you knew, because we only got like one side of the story with everything, it's interesting. And I, I found him to be very humble. Um, he wasn't someone to make excuses about things. And that's why I have a lot of respect for him because he made a comment in the interview that I asked him if it was hard going after the book and dealing with the Elvis fans and the anger. And he said, no, that I did what I did. I made my decisions. And, you know, that's, that's the way. And he understood. He understood why Elvis fans were angry. And he gives you more detail on how, why the book um, didn't turn out the way that they had thought. So go listen to that interview and um, feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you what you thought. Uh, I am going to be giving away a Jungle Room t-shirt tonight. Thank you, Marisa. Hi, Neil. How are you? Oh, thank you, Sarah. You're so sweet. 
Hi, Henry. Welcome. This is your first time. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Hugh. Yeah, I'm very proud of that interview. There's, there's some interviews that I have done that I'm super proud of, and that is one. Okay, so Jenny just said, the number one interview I want you to get now is Joan Esposito Kardashian. The problem is you still go friends with Priscilla, and like Patsy Presley, she probably won't talk. You know, I have, I, I agree with you. She probably won't, but I would love, 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 love to talk to her. Uh, I think she has some stories that we probably have not heard I'm turning off my iPad. Um, but I would love to talk to her. Another, I would also like to talk to Judy West and Pat West. I think they're both still alive and I would love to talk to them. I think, um, so Sarah says, I, I, Elvis, what happened was among the first books I read on Elvis and I, and sh although I did think it was a bit overdramatic, I think they were right to, right to write the book. I agree. The book that was published was not the book that they had envisioned and they helped with. It left out so much. And all they, it did, it was dramatized and it was sensationalized. And they were not happy with the book at all. Yeah, that was it. So I don't know, you guys are, a lot of you are new, but I would encourage you to check out our past podcast, our episode with the Life and Laughs guys, Johnny and Elias. I've done some great interviews. I've had some great shows, but this show this past week has to be the funniest. And I laughed so hard that that night my my jaw was sore from laughing so hard. It, it was hours talking to those guys. And the editing took me 26 hours to get everything because we would go on tangents and go off on different things. And some of it could not be aired because liability and all that. But um, they're a lot of fun. So I want you guys to check out the Life and Laughs podcast. You can find them on any platform that you uh, hear your podcast. The Life and Laughs podcast with Johnny Sanchez and Elias Israel. Israel, I think that's how you say his, his radio name. Doug. Okay, so Doug says Pat West and Red was writing a book about Elvis when he passed. So they were writing another book? I didn't know that. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe I did. Maybe I thought it was more recent. I didn't realize it was in the 70s. Hugh, right? Those guys crack me up. I love them. I, they, I said this to them. It didn't make it on the show, but I did say it. And I want to say it here live. Those guys are going to be huge they, it, they're going to be really big. And you heard it here from me. They're going to be really big. What question would I ask Priscilla? I have so many. I want to know how many, exactly how many fake eyelashes does she really wear? Because I've heard five to seven pairs. And I want to know how that worked, how she saw, could see in the 60s. I know, probably not the question you would want me to ask, but that's probably what I would ask. Also, can you guys hear me okay? Because I have my window open and it's raining and I have magpies, so. I'm not too familiar with Dunleavy. However, if I had been around, I'm pretty certain I would do everything I could in my power to help Elvis confront his problems. That was from Sarah. I feel like the guys did, though. That's my opinion. Um, and my opinion has changed since doing the podcast and doing more research and talking to them. I do have 
a different outlook. I do believe that the guys, not all of them, but the good majority of them love and care for this man. And I do believe that they tried just like the women tried. Um, but how, I mean, Elvis Presley was a grown man and he, he was going to do what he wanted and drugs can take control over you and you lose all rational sense and you, you don't care, you know? Thank you guys. Okay, good. So you can hear me. Yeah, it was all this. And I know that people don't like to say that or feel that way. Uh, Elvis, you know, we put him on almost a godlike pedestal. And we don't want our, our icons to be to have flaws. We don't want them to be anything but perfect. And Elvis had a lot of flaws. And sorry, guys, I want to have to shut my window. They're just, they're going to do work out there. Hold on. Sorry. Now I'm going to sweat. Okay. Sorry about that. I should have went ahead and shut it. Yeah, no, you can't tell the boss what to do. And he was also their friend, so they, they cared about him. But he was, he signed the paychecks. He, it was their livelihood. And he, yes, Kyle, he was human and, um, sorry, my bed's all screwed up. When we get into our new house, it will be so great that my studio will not be my bedroom. <laughs> Well, Sarah, uh, Dave, Sonny, and Red didn't really walk away. They were fired. So, and Elvis would not talk to them. Um, he did not want to uh, have any confrontation with them at all. He had his father fire them. And Dave talks about how he went um, to the house, I think it's California or Vegas, I can't remember. And he waited for over an hour and the doctor I think it was Dr. Ganim uh told him you know he's not going to talk to you Elvis Elvis was up uh, Elvis was in his um the diet coma so Elvis would this doctor would put him under to lose weight and I guess you go into a coma you don't eat and Linda Thompson actually wrote writes about it in her book a, a sleep coma a diet coma If Gladys was alive, you can bet he would still be alive today. She would probably be what, like 105? She was like 19 or 20 years older than Elvis. Sam Thompson said Elvis fired over confronting him. He made plans to go back to the police department and Elvis asked him to come back. He did that a lot. He also, uh, Billy Smith had left a couple times, N never fired, but he, he, would le he left on his own accord and Elvis really wanted him back. And he did. They were family. Right, Sarah? Yeah. A lot of those guys were fired more than once. I think Jerry Schilling had been fired. Or he kind of he kind of quit in anger. And it was a blowout because Elvis wanted the the condo that he was staying in when they were skiing in Colorado I think it was and it was a, a fight and he left but they stayed friends Joe Esposito I think had been fired and uh, according to some of the guys he was actually getting ready to fire Joe again before he died or I think it was going to be after that tour that final tour he was going to fire Joe I think he was going to fire Dick Grobe he he, from the Memphis Mafia books and some of the guys that I've, or the family of some of the guys I've spoke to has said that Elvis was getting ready to make some changes. L Linda Thompson helped keep him alive for as long as she was with him. I, I believe that. I, I do believe 
Um, I do believe she did. I do believe she was good for Elvis um, for that time period. And, you know, it kind of sucks because had Elvis got off drugs and had he kind of cleaned up his act, I think they probably would have worked. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. I don't think he would have stayed faithful. But I think, you know, they would have went on. Oh, David, uh, he should have fired Colonel Parker. You know, I have three episodes on Colonel Tom Parker. You should check them out. And it's one is with Elena Nash. The other is with John Daly and then Charles Stone, who actually knew Colonel Tom Parker and Elvis personally. And you'll get three different perspectives on Colonel Tom Parker. I encourage you to listen to that and you can... You know, maybe you won't change your mind at all. You may have the same opinion, but it does, it is nice to have different per, uh, perceptions, perspectives, sorry, perspectives on these situations. Doug, right. He asked Billy if he could take Joe's job, but he also asked Billy when Joe was fired, it was because of Billy or Marty, I can't remember. Joe was calling the house um, looking for to come back and I can't remember if it was Billy or Marty but Elvis asked one of them hey do we need Joe and they said yes and you know how funny history would have been different if they had said no I'm sorry Sarah I don't want to read that out loud um, but I my heart goes out to you and I totally understand Oh, yeah, he was seeing Linda and Sheila at the same time. And there was uh, Brandy, not Brandy Pennington, Ann Pennington, right? Ann Pennington. And then there was uh, the young lady who died. He, there's a picture. I think Ashley has it in one of her videos or it's a spa guy. She, um, there's a picture of her riding um, behind Elvis on his motorcycle. She's got her, her arms around his waist and she, she was seeing her. There was, there's so many. He saw Sybil Shepherd. Um, I think they dated uh, for a couple months. Right. Okay, Doug, I got you. The colon thing, you know, I, I've just reread the Memphis Mafia book. And there was a lot of, he had an enlarged, Elvis had an enlarged colon and it had lost its elasticity. I think that's how you say it. And it was enlarged and he wouldn't go anywhere without fleet enemas. And he was having problems. Did they not have the capacity in the, in the medical field to fix that in the seventies? I'm still confused on that. Like, is that something that once it happens, you just, you're kind of screwed? Or could he have gotten that repaired? Anyone who knows, please let me know. Self-abuse was one of Elvis's worst flaws. I'm not hating on him since we all are human. You know, self-abuse, self-sabotage. Let's talk about that, the self-sabotage. I always wondered... This is just me speculating. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist. I sometimes wonder if there was some guilt with Elvis in, in his fame with all this money. You know, he was very generous. He, he even gave things away when he was a child. And I've always wondered if part of the self-sabotage that he did to himself with relationships, not just with the women, but with his, with his male friends, if it wasn't something as if he was trying to, to get rid of all the good, of all this fame and fortune. And I, I wonder if he just didn't feel like he was deserving. And I know that he had made comments at some point in his life many times, why me, why, why me? But it really, I, I find myself going down this rabbit hole when I start thinking about it, this, the self-sabotage, and he did it constantly. So Dr. Nick said that Elvis was afraid of the surgery. That could possibly be, but 
I don't know. I think I would have had the surgery. It, it can't. Yeah. But didn't they, they knew that he, so they didn't know he had the colon problem until after he died? Yeah, self-doubt. It is, you know, I want to go back to the self-sabotage and the self-doubt. You know, it, it, you, you, we put these people on these pedestals and it just breaks my heart to think that this man, there, he, to be so complete and so solid on stage, but in many ways in his personal life and in his, in, in his head, he was broken. And I can see now, I really understand this as a woman. I didn't get it when I was growing up and, and loving Elvis. I see why women wanted to baby him. And they wanted to, to take care of him. I think he always had that childlike quality. And just like children, he would throw his temper tantrums. And he would just blow up just like a child. And I think sometimes those temper tantrums were part of his frustration in not being able to express himself having the, the weight of the world on his shoulders and that he couldn't disappoint. And I feel like he was just stretched too thin with all the responsibilities he had, not just with his music career, but at home with the guys and his dad. And it really just makes my head spin. Yeah, the self-harming to get drugs. He would, he would... Uh, cause injuries to himself to get drugs and I do believe part of the drug use it was an escape I think he had done it seen it felt it ate it he'd done everything and towards that end of his life something had to change something had to change and he was looking for that next evolving part in his life because you know if you look at his life he would evolve and adapt it would take a while sometimes but I do believe he was at this crossroad in his life and something was going to have to give if he, had he not died there were going to have to be changes there was no way possible he could keep going the way he was going the numb the pain yeah he should smoke some weed. Well, I think he did smoke some weed when he was going through his um, glaucoma problems. I, I read that in Linda's book and in the Baby Let's Play House by Alana Nash. And, and there's a video with Dolores Hart from the 50s and they're passing it. They're smoking some, smoking the doobie. Okay, that was bad. That's my son says that all the time and I think it's funny. Um, what's the key word? I'm going to take a drink every time I hear the key word. What's the key word? Um, oh, thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that since you brought it up. Uh, Anastasia, I know I'm probably not saying your name right, but I'm going to call you Anastasia. The death of his mother. It, you know, it really, it's so funny because growing up, and I, I've been an Elvis fan my whole life, and I never really understood or, it sounds horrible, I didn't really empathize that much with his, his heartache from losing his mother because I just couldn't understand that. And it wasn't until my mom passed away last year that I totally got it and understood and he was so young and his mom was the anchor and his mom she ruled the roost she controlled everything and he never wanted to disappoint her and his buying Graceland for his his parents is mainly for his mom you know was his driving force to keep to be good to do she was his core she was almost like his conscience when she died, I think he kind of was like, I can do whatever I want now. She's not here. And the pain of her not being there 
I think it just, I mean, again, childlike. When you let a three-year-old in a room and there's cookies and candy and you tell the child, don't eat it, but you walk out of the room, the whole, everything's going to be gone. And that's how I felt with Elvis. And I think he was constantly searching for that security he had when his mom was still alive. And I don't think he ever found it. Oh, Riley Jane. Oh, yeah. She, you know, has she stayed alive? You know, he started the drugs in his army days in Germany um, when they would go out on those 24-hour maneuvers. And so... I think even if he dabbled, I think she would not have let that continue. Right, Doug, I agree with you. All about the mighty dollar. Arkansas Dave, thank you so much. Um, Dr. Ganim was all about the mighty dollar. He didn't give a rat's butt for Elvis. Speaking of Dr. Ganim, why wasn't he ever investigated? Why was it just Dr. Nick? I've always found that odd. He was, and there was other doctors too. It wasn't just Dr. Nick. I, I Ashley, <laughs> I, I really want to know how some of these doctors got away with what they got away with and Dr. Nick didn't. Yes, Wayne. Um, Priscilla leaving, I, I think that, probably brought him back to when his mom died. I don't think he was, I think they were having problems for a while. I think the biggest thing is that she left him for another man. I think that's what ate him up. Um, that's a John Daly question. Okay, I'll have to ask John. Don't let me forget. Um, <laughs> as if... <laughs> you're my secretary and I didn't mean it like that. I do want to know because I have been, uh, after my Dave Hebler interview, I've read, you guys, you have to read The Elvis Experience by Dave Hebler. So good. I've been doing a lot more research on the, the guys, not just the core Memphis Mafia, but the ones that came later, the ones that were there early and didn't stay. And Dr. Ganim's name is just continues to be brought up in some of these interviews and uh, articles. <sighs> I just don't like it. I don't like how, I mean, yeah. anyway, I, I just find it odd that he was never held accountable um, for his role in the, the drug prescriptions. Oh, so Jan just pointed out something. She just said that Dr. Ganim gave Elvis a lot of pills under the table, but it couldn't be legally proven. Ah. That's it. Mm -hmm. Tom Parker was also investigated. That's right, Hugh. In the 1980 case against him by EPE, he was said to have defrauded Elvis of $8 million in the last three years, and he caused Elvis to lose a fortune. There was a lot of wrong. Go back and listen to my episodes on Colonel Tom Parker. I think that was addressed to by Charles Stone, and there was some insight on that. Sarah's. As long as it's PG, send it to me. She says she has a video for me. <laughs> Just have to clarify. As long as it's PG. El didn't Elvis also get drugs from a dentist? Yes, Kelsey Marie, he did. He got, um, he was always seeing a dentist. And he would get drugs from his dentist. Uh, he would, he, th there's a story where, he said a fan scratched his hand and got infected and actually had a scar. But some of the guys said that he did it to himself and aggravated it and kept picking at it to make it infected so he could go get um, drugs for it. Yes, water. Ashley, this is my dinner. My dinner is my protein shake. I haven't had time to eat today, so sorry. I know it's cocktail hour and I'm drinking a protein shake. And water. I know my reputation as the farty person has just dwindled. Ooh, water. 
says the girl that drinks crystal light. <laughs> um, I'm hungry. I know. Kyle says he's hungry too. Um, <laughs> you guys don't even laugh. Colonel Parker would call down while Elvis was performing at the Hilton and say $10,000 on 26 black on the roulette wheel and not even tell Elvis. No wonder he had him work his butt off. I did hear that. Uh, I did hear and read a lot about why Elvis had to perform in Vegas later on when he didn't really want to for those long stretches of time. And it was because to help Colonel pay off his uh, gambling debt. Uh, so I'm sure there's some truth to that too. The Colonel, the Colonel Kurt court stuff gets hazy. The court appointed appointee for Lisa Marie found all these things Colonel was unfairly getting, but the estate wanted to work with him still, despite that. The estate obviously appreciates Colonel Tom Parker and they've highlighted him and spotlighted him um, over the years. Uh, I don't think you're going to hear the state say anything negative about Colonel Tom Parker. I need to know. Okay. Everyone's playing a drinking game and, and, and I don't know what the game is. What's the word or am I not supposed to know the word? Wait, that doesn't make, I should say the word. I don't know. What's the word? I don't know. What's the word to drink? Parker lived to an age of 87 creeping around Vegas. You know, guys, I tell you what. I would have loved to have met Colonel Tom Parker. I don't, I probably would have been scared out of my mind. I probably would have been intimidated. I still would have liked to have met him. I would just... I, I would not more of asking him things, but just to to be around his presence. And, and I want to feel that that same whatever Elvis felt with him, whether it was respect or fear or whatever. I, I want to I want to be in his like presence. I would have loved that. It really sucks that we'll never get that opportunity. Every time you say Elvis, take a drink. OK. The Snowman Club, we talked about the Snowman Club uh, with John Daly. The Snowman Club. I want to be a member of the Snowman Club. I do. <laughs> it's still going. It's still out there. Thank you, Arkansas Dave, my interview with Elena Nash. Yeah, and she talks about meeting Colonel Tom Parker and she talks about being in a vehicle with him and they're driving and she <laughs> was a little scared because she was asking some questions that the Colonel was not happy about her asking. And she, she talks about that in my interview with her that she was getting a little scared. And that interview, just the segment on Colonel Tom Parker, it's on YouTube. You can check that out. Christine Wright, she, I could actually like envision that she, she was a young, she was like in her 20s. She was still really young. And she, yeah, I think he, I think he, Colonel Tom Parker kind of got off on intimidating people. I think that was part of his personality. I think that that was a thing for him. He liked to be in control and and be powerful. The car ride, yeah. Sarah, yes. So Dodger was a member of the Snowman Club. Dodger was obviously Elvis's grandmother, and she was she was a member of the Snowman Club. <laughs> Ashley, really, girl, <laughs> you're you're so funny. You are perfection. What is the snowman club? Well, you know, I could answer that, but I could also just point you to my interview with John Daly where we talk about it, but I'll give you a brief synopsis. The snowman club was a league, uh, that it was a special club that Colonel Tom Parker started and it was invite only. You couldn't just, anyone could just not, you couldn't just say, I want to be in the snowman club. You had to be invited in 
and it was kind of top secret and it's kind of cool. John explained it way better than I just did. Is it true that Parker hypnotized people? Well, Sonny West says that it was a joke that he would pretend to hypnotize people. Um, other people say that he did. They, some people really believe that Colonel Tom Parker hypnotized Elvis before he went on stage. And, you know, who knows? I think he had some, some little, some, some, some powers there. And I think Elvis was receptive to that. Cause I, I personally believe you can't be hypnotized unless you want to be. And I, so maybe they had some mind, I don't know what's the word. I don't know. Is Elvis Presley? I mean, nothing is beyond uh, approach for, with with Elvis in concerns of Elvis. I'm pretty sure they maybe maybe was it him, maybe Colonel Tom Parker didn't hypnotize him in that that sense. But maybe he the way he talked to Elvis before he went on stage. Maybe he gave him you know a, a speech like coaches do before they go out for the the team before they go play. I don't know, but I do think they, they had something. Oh, where did you find Dave's new book, Jamie website? So if you go to Amazon and if you are, if you have Kindle unlimited, you can download it for free, but I've only found it on Amazon. So I have the digital copy and I'm getting the paper copy. So amazon.com is called The Elvis Experience by Dave Hebler. And I really think you're going to enjoy it because it, he talks a little bit about his life, not too much, but it, enough so you can get a feeling of what he's about. He goes into his karate career. He goes into his relationship with Elvis and some fun stories in there. And I, I love, there's a story that I'm going to share with you. It's Lamar Fike. You guys, you know who Lamar Fike is, right? Tom Jones. Well, Tom Jones and Lamar Fike have a champagne guzzling contest. Now, Lamar Fike is this, remember, he was a big guy. Tom Jones drank Lamar Fike under the table to the point that they, the guys had to physically carry Lamar out of the, the room wherever they were in the champagne guzzling contest. Tom Jones didn't even phase them. I mean, they were going back, they were just shooting them down. Tom Jones being Tom Jones, he just went on to order more champagne. Tom drank it every day. Yeah, hey, champagne's my, my beverage of choice, so I get it. I don't think I would wanna go into a champagne, champagne guzzling contest with Tom Jones. <laughs> I probably wouldn't make it. Uh, great photos of Tom Jones on stage with Elvis. Yes. I'm a huge Tom Jones fan myself. Tom Jones in the 70s. Can't beat that. Except unless it was Elvis. Mm. Tom Jones has an incredible voice. Yes, he does. Is Tom seeing Priscilla? I doubt it. No. I think they, just like old friends, have had dinner and lunch, but I don't think that they would ever be a couple. I don't see that at all. No. I'm not repeating that, Kirk. Napoleon, you don't drink, smoke, take drugs, or do weed. I don't even sleep more than four hours a day. So how many hours do you sleep at night? Teach me your words. Southern words. Yes, Jenny, teach Ashley Southernisms. I'm from the South. I live in Alaska now. I think everyone should, should know some Southern words. Teach me your words. Speaking of Southerners, I was talking to Joey Smith today. Joey Smith called me and I was at work and I uh, called him back um, in my office and I shut my office door and I had about a 10, 15 minute conversation with him. He's a grandpa. 
uh, Dakota Smith, who is uh, an MMA fighter. I'm sure if you guys follow me on on social media or listen to my shows, you know that we've had Dakota and, and Joey on and uh, Dakota just had a baby. And so that means that Billy and Joe Smith are great, great grandparents. How cool is that? Buggy. I call a grocery cart buggy still to this day. And I've been in Alaska for 24 years. It's never going to change. But anyway, so yes. So Joe and Billy Smith are great grandparents. That's crazy. Hugh, I have seen that. So Tom Jones singing I'll Never Fall in Love Again with Lonnie Donegan's son on The Voice. It's a marvelous moment. Yes. Yes, I totally agree. Danny Smith put out a new MMK video today. Did everyone see it? No, but I got, I, it was sent to me, but I haven't had time to, to watch it. I plan on watching it tonight. I am on Facebook. You can find me, facebook.com slash it's Jamie K, J-A-I-M-E-K-A-Y. That's my Facebook. And then also Jungle Room, um, Jungle Room Podcast has a Facebook page and a Facebook group. The group is really fun. Ashley is part of the, the group. Kyle keeps it running. It Check it out. How old is Dakota? Um, Dakota will be 20. So he's 19. He looks like he's 12. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a grown man. I love this group of people. Napoleon, I can't agree with you more. I have to tell you guys, I always get nervous doing these Facebook lives. And I don't know why I get myself worked up. And you guys are great. You guys are so awesome. And not to be a nag. I don't call it being a nag. I call it listening the first time. That's what I tell my kids. Don't forget. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you haven't done it already, uh, again, we're just trying to get to a thousand subscribers and I've been doing the podcast for almost three years. So the YouTube channel is really new and it's coming together. It's coming together. And I'm really excited about the things that we've got going on. Um, I know Ashley announced this in her trivia night, but I just wanted a case, um, for anyone that's coming on that didn't see Ashley's. And I'm horrible at trying to explain this. So are we a group of people on Instagram? Ha we're having our own Elvis week. So if you go on the Instagram on Ashley's Instagram, mine, Jungle Room Podcast, uh, John Daly's, I can't remember everyone's, Kyle's, uh, Patricia, I, 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 just go on Instagram. There's a schedule there and you can see from August 10th to August 15th, we got something going on every day and I am so honored and excited to be a part of it. My segment is reading Elvis. So we'll be talking about Elvis books and yeah, oh my gosh, like I'm starting to get all flushed because I'm super excited about this and I'm super honored and touched that Ashley um, included me in on this and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Because I'm really bummed out that I'm not going to Elvis Week this year. I don't know if most of you um, knew this, but I was going to be there for a Ginger Alden event. I was going to interview Ginger on stage for uh, the event. It's called An Evening with Ginger Alden. Um, it was postponed until next year. But I also was going to be at John Daly's event for two days um, with a table. To, and we were going to have a jungle room meetup. I would, so we get to meet my girl, Ashley, uh, the Smith family, the Lacker sisters, John Daly. I'm so bummed. So this, doing this virtual Elvis week with these fantastic and talented people, it, it helps the burn. <laughs> it helps me not get too sad about um, not being at Elvis week. And that's what we were talking about, Joey Smith and I today, because he wanted to know if I was still going and unfortunately, no. Oh, wow. Okay. I missed a lot. Jamie K, you are amazing. Oh, thank you, Ashley. Uh, you think you're going to go over there in the South, you reckon? 
Okay, seven words, got it. Um, Arkansas Dave, maybe Ashley can answer this. Has John said if there's a backup plan, if the health department in Tennessee says no to Elvis Week due to increase in COVID-19 cases? I don't live in Tennessee. I know here in Anchorage, we're back to phase one starting Monday. So that sucks. Thank you, Sarah. Elvis books. I... Yeah, Elvis books. I wish if you guys could see all the Elvis books in this house. You, oh, my husband complains. My husband complains about all the books I have in my house. Period. <laughs> I'm an avid reader. I much rather read than watch TV. Thank you, Ashley. She put the link there. If you guys look at uh, at Jungle Room Podcast is my Instagram handle at Jungle Room Podcast. All one word. Yeah, it is kind of crazy to have a lot of gatherings. Have you read Elvis in Arkansas by Joe P. Walker? I think that's a book that you and Ashley haven't read. I have not read that. I haven't even heard of that. And it makes me a little sad that I did not know about that book. Elvis in Arkansas. I'll have to Google that. I don't, I don't even know. Never heard of it. Never read it. Um, so to answer your question about the Elvis week at John Daly's event, John said, everything is a go and legal to do his event. Napoleon, have a glass for me. <laughs> Are Elvis fans mostly Trump voters? Obviously not if they live in Europe or Canada or Australia or anywhere else in America. And okay, I'm not, okay. I don't think all Elvis fans are Trump's voters. Let's put it that way. And then I'm not saying it anymore. I'm trying, I'm gonna be like Elvis. N never talk about politics. Not on air or live anyway. Is yeah, no politics. Kyle and I, we just had a meeting earlier today about no politics in our, on our website or anything. Um, the live vigil. Oh, yeah, my face. I don't have a poker face. Uh, hi, Joel. Well, welcome. Uh, nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. I'm like this excited. I love seeing new people. That's, that's awesome. Sarah, gotcha girl. Um, anyway, okay, so let's, uh, what was I gonna talk about? Oh, whoa, whoa. started reading you guys' stuff and I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, you can find the book Elvis and Arkansas on Amazon. It tells about all his journeys and early concerts in our beautiful state. Okay. I've never been to Arkansas, so I will do that. You know, I live in Alaska. I've been in Alaska for 24 years and Elvis never came to Alaska. Like I, I guess I can see why maybe it's because it's Alaska, but if in Anchorage, we had, we, we have the Sullivan arena. It's closed down now, but it was, we've had, big name artists come up here. So it's kind of shocking that Elvis never came to Alaska, especially he loved to ski, you know. Yay, Sarah. So Kyle, Sarah requested to join our Facebook group. Um, we have a Facebook group for The Jungle Room. It's facebook.com slash The Jungle Room. And we have a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of pictures. You can share your stories. We talk about past episodes. It's, it's a cool little group of people. Um, I am a Bama girl. Roll Tide, baby. I do have the Jungle Room sessions. I have actually the Elvis Presley from Elvis Presley Boulevard, what it was called originally. 
that belonged to my mom. It's, do I have it up here? I think I have it. Oh, I do. So this is, um, was my mom's album. And um, if you can see, it even has, I mean, Elvis Presley's signature, but he came on every album. But yeah, there you go. That's cool. Lots of albums. I have been to Phoenix City and Dothan. Well, have you, Doug? Well, if you've been to Phoenix City, you've been to my hometown. Because I am originally from Phoenix City, Alabama. See how the accent just comes out? <laughs> Uh, the outtake CD is awesome. I have it on my um, iPad. I have it, the digital outtakes of that. Um, I love Elvis, Elvis's outtakes in that, especially when he's talking about his grandma. It's cute. Really? Okay, so Hugh just said, did you know the scarf was Photoshopped to cover his stomach more on that album cover. Really? Because the scarf is right here. Oh. No. Huh. Interesting. So you learn something new every day. I can see that. <laughs> Give me the booze, yeah. Um, was there a vineyard large enough for an Elvis concert in Alaska? Yes, we, the Sullivan Arena, um, it's closed now, but it, it was huge. In, um, we've had other stars, but yeah, Elvis could have played here and it would have sold out. Um, my husband's not here. I think, I'm going to say Sullivan Arena. I don't know how many people, but it, it's a, it's one of those circular stadiums and it's where we, we had hockey games and everything under the sun at Sullivan Arena, but they shut it down like two years ago. That sucks. I was, I was thinking about the other day, I was passing the Sullivan Arena and I was thinking about the spa guy and I was like, oh I man, you know, if Elvis had performed here, I could do a great video <laughs> on Sullivan Arena. Uh, been to Anchorage, Fairbanks, and Bettles, Sarah B. Are you, so you've been to Anchorage and Fairbanks. Awesome. Two different towns completely. Totally different. Do you think Parker didn't want him to go to Alaska? Well, um, when you think about Elvis's tours, they seem to always be in the same spots. I mean, uh, yeah, he performed at Madison Square Gardens, but it always seemed to be in southern states, and which is, he didn't really tour all over America. It was always more on the southern side. If I could have offered Elvis some advice, what would it be? I don't think Elvis would have taken my advice, but let's just say in this fantasy, in this hypothetical world, that Elvis Presley and I are best friends and he listens to everything I say. He just thinks I'm wonderful and very smart. I would tell him, get within Margaret. <laughs> That's what I would tell him. If I had been in that conversation in the kitchen and he's trying to make uh, and Margaret told him that she wouldn't come to Graceland with that woman there and he tortured himself with Priscilla or Ann Margaret. I would have I would have told him Ann Margaret. So actually I would say me and then <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, advice for Elvis do a stars born. Yeah, I wish Elvis would have done that. Right, David? Totally true. He was offered $10 million to do shows in Egypt in front of pyramids, but Parker refused. 
I love Anne Margaret. I can't help it. I love her. I think he, I think, I mean, we all know the story and I know I've talked about this on my other lives. You know, he made promises to Priscilla's parents. I mean, he had to have her over there. He couldn't even wait for her to graduate high school. She had two months left. Her, her dad was getting stationed in California that summer. Elvis should have just waited those couple of months. I think having to that whole rush uh, pretty much backed him into a corner. And, you know, there you have it. She was meant to be with Roger Smith. I agree. Everything happens for a reason. And Anne Margaret and Roger Smith have been married for a very long time. And um, I just love her. I don't know. I, I love Anne Margaret. Uh, yeah, but he didn't get the plane to what? 19. So Henry says his plane burned a lot of fuel. So it would have been cost an arm and leg to fly to Alaska. But he got the plane like 75, 76. He could have flown the other ways a commercial did he fly commercial I don't know. um the whole priscilla thing yeah i don't really want to get into i don't want to get into in a lot of priscilla talk tonight because i just don't feel like it's appropriate right now especially with everything that family goes is going through and it, it breaks my heart it's so sad and Margaret is another interview that would be awesome. Yes, but we all know she won't talk about Elvis. She, she and that's why I have so much respect for her. She's not going to give us the details that we want. You know, we want we want to know everything. I want to know what was he like. Everything. I want to know the arguments they had. She's not going to divulge any of that. Which good for her, but. I want to know. Uh, so, Neil, Tom Parker was an illegal alien. Listen to my interviews with Charles Stone and John Daly and Alana Nash. We, we talk about that. Uh, Arkansas Dave, why is it not thoroughly discussed why Priscilla didn't go on the road more with him? Well, Elvis had a rule. Wives got to go on the opening night of his of his show and closing night, and then they were they were not um, allowed. When he was making his movies, when they were living together, he was still messing around he didn't want I think one of his things he would say you don't take a sandwich to uh, a banquet so he kept Priscilla at home you know looking nice and pretty and then he could go play um all right yeah <laughs> how about Shelly Fabre <laughs> Shelly Fabre you know, so Shelly Fabre has said that she and Elvis never hooked up. She had a boyfriend and then she got, she married that boyfriend. Um, I feel like they probably had a, a good relationship, a good working relationship. They had a lot of respect for one another, but they did have chemistry in the movies that they did together. There was, there was a little, there was a little spark, but then again, I mean, how can you not have a little spark with Elvis Presley? Mary Tyler Moore and Elvis didn't have a spark, but um, yeah, I see a little spark with those two. What about the new Elvis movie? Will it be good? I'm not so sure. Boz Lerman is a bit OTT. I don't know what OTT means in his production. Um, I have no opinion on it because I haven't seen it and I hope it's great. I am, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching it, but I don't feel like, you know, we should start having opinions for a movie that's not even completed yet. Any other ladies not attracted to Elvis? Okay. I, I think maybe because I'm older, I've never been, so I think he was a sexy man, but I've never been one of like, uh, like fantasizing about being with him or thinking 
So maybe I'm not sexually attracted to him, but I, I've been drawn to Elvis my whole life. I tell the story, Elvis was my imaginary friend growing up. I mean, seriously, I would talk to Elvis Presley when I was a child. <laughs> he was my friend. Uh, it's so weird. Uh, and, uh, it, and, he, and he, I was eight months old when he died. So I don't have a sexual attraction to him, actually. So I guess I'm one of those. But I do respect and I do appreciate how magnificent he was on stage with his songs, music, talent. So unbelievable. And he was a good looking man. I mean, I can appreciate that. Thanks, Sarah. But you know, guys, think about this though. Let's just go back to Anne Margaret for just one second. Anne Margaret, Elvis Presley getting married. Hmm. Mm -mm. That would have been, gosh, they would have been, that would have been something else. Elvis women wanted to sleep with him. Men wanted to be him. I want, yeah, I want it. In my fantasies, I'm Elvis's best friend, Anastasia. That's how I think. I think we would be, I would be like the pal, you know. And, you know, he would just listen to me. I would give him great career advice, relationship advice. <laughs> it would be great. Hmm. Elvis is like my brother, Ashley. Yeah, I, that's how I feel. I feel like there's a, a family connection with Elvis, not a, a lust. Now, my mom, when she was alive, her, she, she told me when I was a little kid, I would think I was like five or six, and she was just telling me a story about Elvis, and she said that, she would go and watch his movies. And then she said, and then I'd go home and I'd think about kissing him. And I remember being like five or six years old. And I was like, gross. gross. <laughs> ah, his kindness and generosity was amazing. Yes. Uh, let's all go get in a time machine. I agree, Kyle. Let's do it. Ooh. All right, you guys. Well, we've been on for almost over an hour. Are you guys ready to win something? Win a t-shirt? Let me show you the t-shirt. So, this is the Jungle Room podcast t-shirt. The Jungle Room rock, vinyl, and eyeliner, an Elvis-inspired podcast. I have these shirts in red, yellow, white, blue, and pink. So, and I am going to give away to one of you right now. All right. Okay. Are we ready? This is one question and then we're wrapping it up and it's not a hard question. So same rules as Ashley, whoever answers first wins. Here we go. Are we ready? All right. Yes, I'm making up the question as I, as I go. Okay. Who wrote the book, A Little Thing Called Life? Who wrote the book, A Little Thing Called Life? So easy, guys. Linda, that's right. Randy, why you have won a t-shirt? So if you could please message me on our Jungle Room Facebook page. Jungle Room, the Jungle Room podcast Facebook page. Um, let me know what size you want, what color, and also your address. Hey, so yeah, you will get a Jungle Room podcast t-shirt. Um, yeah, so congratulations. Um, I do have a Heather Lomat CD, and I can give that away as well. Do, 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 do. Okay, you know, Kyle, Greg gave us a question, and I don't remember what it said. Okay. Um, yes, Kyle, 
I was going to say that, Kyle. We're, we're connected here. Make sure, you guys, when you get your t-shirts, make sure to post a selfie of you in the shirt with the hashtag Jungle Room Podcast. Ashley, that goes for you, too. <laughs> um, okay. So, Heather Lomax CD. This is a great CD. Great songs on here. Um, adore her. Okay, Kyle. Do you remember that question that Greg gave us if not I can make up one I can make up a question he had a really good one all right I've got books on my brain now I want to ask a uh okay Kyle that's good um I don't want to ask another book question okay hello Oh, shoot. What can I ask? Do, 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 do. All right. Mm. Oh, shoot. I have a great question, but I forgot the guy's name. Um, I'm trying to think of something that we've talked about tonight that I can ask again. How about this? Ask my favorite question. Kyle, what is your favorite question? I don't remember. I don't know what your favorite question is, Kyle. <laughs> okay, here's Kyle's question. Who wrote, it's your baby, you rock it? Whoever answers first, Kyle, you'll have to, to be the judge here. So Blizzard Baby and Doug Dickinson say Lamar. Is that right? Blizzard Baby. Blizzard Baby, you won. Heather Lomance is CD. And I will make sure to get that to you. Please message us on the Jungle Room Facebook page. Um, with your address, and I will send that to you guys. Um, Sarah, you said you have a question. Do you have a question for the trivia, or <laughs> how many balls did Dodger have to dodge in order to gain the nickname Dodger? I think it was just once, but that's a good question. Um, we can get ready to wrap up unless you guys have questions for me. If you do, I will answer anything and everything um, if you have something you want to ask me. Oh, Napoleon, thank you. Cheers with my water. Um, when is your Selena podcast happening? Um, it, I am actually working on that. It's actually going to be a YouTube video um, first. And oh, I don't want to let the cat out of that. There's a couple people that I'm interviewing for that and it's just trying to get our schedules to mesh and that would be the podcast but I'm also making a Selena video and that should be out I would love to say this week but the way my schedule's going it's probably going to be next week but I've been working on that uh, video and I'm really proud of it what what my mom's favorite Elvis song she had two was um, you were, You're Always on My Mind, which was a Willie Nelson song, but she loved Elvis's version of You Are Always on My Mind, and she loved the song Let Us Pray. And there was one more. The, right before she, a few months before she died, uh, the song Never Walk Along with Lisa Marie. He, he, Elvis recorded it before, but the version with Lisa Marie, she loved that song, and she had told me she wanted to play it at her funeral. And I was like, Ugh, why are you talking about funerals? But we did play it at her funeral. And, and now, if, every time I hear it, I cry. Jamie, have you been to any of the locations in Alabama where Elvis had concerts? Mo Montgomery, Mobile, Birmingham. Yes, to all three. 
Jamie K. What uh, upcoming on the Jungle Room this week? We have Julian Grant. He is uh, another lifelong Elvis fan, but he has some great stories. Um, it's going to be on YouTube um, Monday. It'll be on YouTube on Monday, and then it'll be on the podcast on Wednesday. And then next week, I have Kyle is not going to like this, but I have my brother and my cousin, uh, my Puerto Rican cousin Rafael from New York and my brother from Alabama, they will be on the show with Mike and I, and we're actually going to have a conversation about Buddy Holly and Richie Valens, their career, and also the day that they died in the plane crash. So that is going to be not this week, but next week. Oh, this movie sounds fun. Jamie, what is your least favorite Elvis song? You know, I'm probably going to get some hate for this. I really don't, I do not like his version of Bridge Over Troubled Water. I, I just don't like it. So that's probably, that's it. If you could see Elvis live when and where, Vegas, 1971, 1972 Elvis. That's the Elvis. I, I would love to see Elvis in Vegas in those early 70s. Oh my God. Yeah. When he still had that fire because he hadn't been, he had been making those movies for so long and getting back out there. Yeah. Um, if, Jamie, did you get to find out the story of how why Priscilla being the maid of honor and Sunny West wedding? No, Wayne, I haven't. Good memory, but I so want to know how Priscilla became the maid of honor and Sunny and Judy's wedding because in Sunny West's book he says it's a story you know the long story of how she became the maid of honor as if she wasn't really asked but he doesn't offer any details I really want to know because I'm nosy what was your favorite Elvis jumpsuit oh that my favorite jumpsuit is that little silk I don't know if it's silk or not but that white jumpsuit that he sings in Vegas suspicious minds I know it's not one of his bedazzled, but God, he looks so good in that, that, that suit. And it's something I would wear. Maybe that's why I like it. Sarah, I'm like warning you, Sarah. Uh, I like the, yes, the American Eagle suit. Yes. Um, the day the music died. That's right. Oh, I think we're going to be a little emotional when we do that episode because uh, my brother and I, um, Buddy Holly and Richie Valens was also two of my mom's favorite artists. And uh, La Bamba, that movie, when it came out in the 80s, I remember as a little kid, my mom taking us to see that movie. And I remember her just a sex scene in, in the movie with his brother and his wife. There's some, some scenes in there. And I remember her covering our eyes and yeah, looking. Um. Puerto Rico, yes. Yes, I'm half Puerto Rican. No, you can't tell with the accent, but it's true. Who, who do I develop with weird girl crushes on YouTube? Sarah, you're so funny. Ashley maybe knows since she did top-notch research about the church where Sunny was married on Spy Guy Video. I've asked Ashley. Seems like no one knows. I asked, I asked Ashley that question before I even asked you guys. Um, I love Eagles. Okay, the famous corn flip where the guy switched places, that was Waylon Jennings. That's right, Waylon Jennings. Hi, Mary, how are you? And we have, we're working on an episode, um, it's probably gonna be like another month or two because I'm still doing the research on Waylon Jennings. He's another one that, I, I just, I love, 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 love. Mary Patricia, thanks for joining us. <laughs> What's your favorite Elvis choice of food? Yeah, I know this sounds cliche, but I ate it growing up and it's uh, peanut butter and banana sandwiches. Now, I didn't, we didn't eat it like, uh, a grilled cheese the way he did I guess he Linda Thompson writes in her book with 
stick of butter and you and joe smith has a video on mmk where she shows how to make it we didn't eat it like that um my we would mix the banana and peanut butter together and stir it and then you would spread it on the bread but i do i don't eat i have uh celiac so i can't eat bread or anything gluten but you guys don't probably think i'm gross but i take a bowl of peanut butter and bananas and i mix it up and i eat it with a spoon so um. Oh, Hugh, Elvis tried to record Raylan's We Have It All But Gave Up. The tapes have never surfaced. I did not know that. Huh. Blizzard, baby, right? They're so good. Like, peanut butter and banana, so good. So good. You know, I need to try it. I'll have to use gluten-free bread, though. But I'm going to have to try it the way Joe uh, shows on her video. Okay, you guys. All right. Well, this was fun. I have to tell you guys, you really have cheered me up because I've had a really stressful work week <laughs> last two weeks. Um, and a well, little tired. So this was a lot of fun. Again, I want to remind you to please, if you have not subscribed to the Jungle Room YouTube channel, please subscribe. It's free. And if you want to check out our podcast episodes, you can check that out at jungleroompodcast.com. And you can listen to our podcast on any platform that you listen to podcasts. Also, just want to give a shout out to the Life and Laughs podcast, another podcast for you to, to listen to. Those guys are hilarious. They have an Elvis series going on right now uh, that is extremely great. They've they've also interviewed Dave Hebler, uh, Tish, Elvis's nurse, also Dakota as well. Um, it, it, the Elvis series is great. Also, you guys, majority of you already know Ashley Drew. Check out Ashley Drew Adventures. And also check out the MMK channel on YouTube. All right, you guys. I'm going to let you go, but if you want to talk more with me and Ashley and Kyle, we do have a Facebook group, facebook.com slash the jungle room. All right. Love you guys. Thank you. This was a lot of fun until next time. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you.